Welcome to the short video where I'm going to show you the software OCCT which I use to check for stability uh, for my CPU in a system. I would use this for example when I'm overvolting or underclocking a CPU. Let me take you over to the screen here, show you where to get it and I'll follow you through the settings I use to check for system stability. Right so first up here we have uh, Google. If we just Google download OCCT the first site that comes up here for the OC base uh, site uh, when you click on that here, you'll have the download link for the latest stable version, which here is version 11.0.9. So download this to your uh, machine, install it, and you'll be good to go. Right, so once you've that done, downloaded, installed, you'll have an application that looks uh, something like this. I've made the screen a little bigger here to kind of try and make it a little easier for you to see what I'm doing. So uh, when you open it up, Sorry, let me remove last known steps. When you open it up, it looks something like this. You'll have some options here on your left hand side, uh, different uh, windows here on the top. You can change through to look at different settings uh, and different information. What uh, I'm going to show, show you here now is how I would test the machine uh, multi core. So, do a multi core test, check all the cores, and then how I do that single core check. So, that it will go through each core one at a time, uh, checking for uh, stability issues. So before we start the test, we'll go down here to settings just to show you some of the settings that I'm using and some that you may want to use before running these tests. So from within here, um, the ones I would watch out for are critical temperature. If you're new to this and you know cautious of or don't have a view on how high your temperatures are getting, you can set a limit here to stop at, for example, 90 degrees so that if your CPU hits 90 degrees, the test will stop. Um, I can see my temperatures and you know, it never gets quite that high, so I'm okay. But the option is there if you're walking away from the test. Um, stop on error here, I have enabled. This allows when it runs through its test uh, and an error comes up with a pickle core, it'll stop at that stage, show me the information. Generally, I would, for example, with a per core undervolt, go into my BIOS, make changes to that core in terms of the undervolt setting and try test again. I have previous videos up on undervolting the AMD CPUs. Um, this is just to give the overall view of the OCCT application for both single core and multi core. Um, that's basically all I changed here in the settings. So let's go back out and go straight into it. So first up here, a test, two tests as I said, one for um, the multi core, which I'll show you first, and then I'll show you how to do the single core. Within here, I'll show you the settings I use and how I run it. The one thing I will say for every test I show you here, you should for you know check the full stability, you should run for a, both a small data set and a large data set. A large data set more aligns to kind of gaming performance and gaming workload, and a small data set would apply to other product productivity applications. Um, so it'll give you a better overall, overall view. But for this one, we're going to start with a large data set check. I'll run the test for 15 minutes, see if any cores have any problems, and I will keep running it until I get a clear test. If I get a clear 15 minute test, I might one run one final 45 minute test to you know, be overall happy with the multi-core performance. So 50 minutes duration, the data set I have large, mode extreme, we might as well go a full hog here. The load type variable, that's fine. Started cycle one is fine. Auto instruction set, I'm happy with that. Um, and treads auto. So I'll kick this off here. For the free version, there's a small uh, timer you have to wait through, but once you get through this, you'll be able to kick it off uh, straight away. Now, any questions regarding this, you know, leave them in the comments below. I'm not a complete expert in this, but if I know the answer or can help with some advice, I will do. Also, please consider liking and subscribing as it helps the channel a lot. Okay, so kick off the test. So said, you've seen the settings I use, and this is all we do for the multi-core. The only thing you change in future is maybe the length of time. So I let this run, and I'll come back to the video if uh, an error comes up and show you what I mean by it displaying which core is the problem. Okay, we didn't have to wait long here. We can see that uh, 17 seconds into the uh, test, I have errors on core nine. So core nine in my CPU is causing problems. I have the undervolt, for example, with this CPU set too high. It's at 30. I would go into my bias, reduce it by five or 10, rerun the test, and keep doing that until I get a clear run of um, a stability test. Now you may be not doing single core performance, you may be undervolting you know, the whole CPU or overclocking the whole CPU. Either way, this test will show issues. You just need to adjust your settings, either bring back your overclock or uh, lessen your undervolt 
and rerun the test. Okay, to help keep this video short, we're going to go straight in to how we would test per core. As I said, this was a multi-core run. Uh, this may run fine, you know, once you've changed your settings to adjust your stability. Um, but next up, you're going to try do per core. So it's going to hit each core one at a time. To help show you how this works, I'm also going to use the application here, HW Monitor. Um, so bring this up here. And if I go down to my utilization here for CPU, let me just find it here. You'd think I'd have this checked already, right? So processor utilization. So you'll see here the percentages of each processor being hit. Okay, so we'll keep that over here to the side so we can have a look at it once this kicks off. Okay, for the per core test, we go to advanced mode. Uh, in here, click on uh, settings. What we want to do here, this will display your physical cores. So this is a 5900X. So we have 12 physical cores, 24 threads. So you start on the first core, core zero, and it's going to cycle through one at a time. Uh, we want to do for virtual cores, for the virtual cores, we want to include it. So generally I would do physical and virtual. So it'll test almost two cores, uh, one at a time until it gets through the full list. I would, the core cycle, so this is the, the important one here. Every, so this is a cycle through every active core. So it'll test a specific core for a certain length of time and then move on to the next one, then move on to the next one. The length of time you give this is up to you, but generally um, to not have the test too long, I would cycle through the core every five minutes. So after five minutes of testing core zero and its virtual core, it'll then move on to the next core and so on until it gets through all the, the full run. Uh, and again, in the settings, you might have it set to stop on an error. Um, so the, the, the test will stop and show you which core had the problem as it runs. So there, the only settings I would change in here, I would click uh, yes to that. Uh, down here is the same test format. The one thing to watch here is the time. We have 12 cores. We have set at five minutes each core. So you need to make sure, so that's gonna be 60 minutes to at least get through that full set if it's doing five minutes in each core 12 times. So for the single core, I would change this, for instance, to 65 minutes, just to make sure I have uh, the, the time allowed to fully cover it. And again, I'm running this on a large data set. I might run the same test again, if it runs successfully with a small data set to make sure I'm getting that full stability check. Uh, all the options else stay the same here. You're just on advanced mode. We click run and off it goes. For the purposes of this video, I'm so that. Firstly, these are the settings I would keep and use for the uh, single core one at a time check. For the purposes of this video, I'm going to go back into settings and just to show you how it works, I'm going to change the cycle active core every uh, 15 seconds. And again, watch on the right hand side to make sure you're in minutes and settings or minutes, seconds, hours. Just make sure you have it in, at the right setting for what you want to do. Uh, okay, so just click tick on that. So what I'm going to do now is uh, kick off this stability check okay once that's done hit play and off the test goes and if i look over here at my utilization i see here, here core zero cpu core one the virtual and physical both at 100 percent there that's running now and after 15 seconds that should swap down to the next two cores so just gone past 15 seconds and now we see core two and three being tested at 100 percent and again we wait just 15 seconds one more time to show you uh this in action and again, we would extend this out to five minutes per core and virtual core to run through it. So we see it's running down through the list. It's testing each core one at a time. And sometimes when we pass the stability check on multi-core, we find that we still have problems in single core. When you get into undervolting and overclocking, uh, getting your system stable is, is half the work. Um, so it's important to take some time. I find this a very good tool and it's helped me, especially with my processor and undervolting per core, get it down to a level where I've been able to undervolt with significantly, reduce my temperatures, increase performance and have a stable system. OK, so let's stop this one here because we see it's still running through. That's fine. So that, that's it, really. That's showing you I have the advanced the options there. That's how we do the single core. And on the auto, um, that's what I use for the multi core. Uh, the just be sure you check your times before you start. Uh, look at the error that comes up, make your changes, test again, get those clear tests, consider both data sets, you know, and hopefully it works for you to help, to help you identify uh, what's causing your system issue or if your system is having issue after that overvolt. Uh, listen, thanks for watching uh, and I'll see you in the next one.